American society is changing so that elements of Black culture are viewed as art. We need to keep this momentum. We explore and reminisce about our own hair stories and how our relationship to our hair has changed from childhood into adolescence. We all grew up in D.C. and have probably had similar life experiences, but no one hair story has ever been the same. And I think that's absolutely beautiful. My hair journey begins when I cut my hair about a year ago. And then after I cut my hair, like a few months later, I dyed it um, pink. It was the first time I ever dyed my hair. And my grandparents disapproved of it. They thought that it was like too much and too bold. And they felt like if I cut it, like it would never grow back. And if I dyed it, then like I'd kind of be like unattractive or weird looking. But at school, it was like very accepting. And then outside of school, like, I don't know, I just felt like I was different from everybody else. I dyed my hair because I wanted to stand out. When I had brown hair, I felt as though, like, I was, like, blending in with everybody else. And I hate blending in with everybody else. Um, and I cut my hair because my mom cut her hair when she was younger. And I looked at different people, like Jada Pinkett and Slickwoods for inspiration. And it makes me feel really confident, like with my short hair. Well, my name is Leslie Bryant. I am the owner of Lady Clipper Barbershop, located in Washington, D.C. As a young child, I had long, curly hair down to my elbows. And um, at 13 or 14, relaxed it to make it nice and straight. And then I went through a phase where um, I did a short bob. I like to call it the poodle because it was like a curly bob. Um, <laughs> Um, then I, after I graduated um, college, I did a home dye job and ruined my hair. And my stylist uh, let, told me that the only way to save it is to cut it. So I ended up trying short hair and I sort of never went back after that time. I pursued a career in um, hair um, actually from a suggestion from my barber. I, my background is actually in graphic design, and I got laid off from my job a few years ago, and I decided um, to try something new, but still in the art field. So um, my barber suggested that barbering would be a great um, sort of segue into a, a new form of art. Starting barbering in a mail shop, it was challenging at times because um, I was constantly questioned about my skills by um, clients that were regulars. Um, they were very curious about um, my skill, one, because I, they, I was female, and two, because I was a new face. That was one of the big challenges for me. Um, another challenge was always having to defend my female clients when they came into the shop, as male counterparts would hit on them, or try to get their phone numbers or make comments about their clothes, um, I always felt like I had to be the bouncer between my client and, and my male counterparts. Um, I work alongside uh, three other barbers in my shop. They're all female and um, they are also black women that are DC uh, barbers.
born and raised. Yes, my name is Shani Crow, uh, known as Crowzilla on the internet. Um, I'm an interdisciplinary artist, which means that I use uh, various media to convey ideas that I have, so it's similar to conceptual art. Um, a lot of my, my, the work that I'm most well known for is uh, braided portraits that I braid the styles and I also photograph myself. So I'm a photographer, I'm also a lifelong braider, I've been braiding since I was a child. So I kind of apply all of these skills that I have. Um, um, I learned how to braid when I was maybe like five or six. And then I started to um, do my own hair when I was about 10 or 11. And then at that time I started to get clients because people would ask me who did my hair. And then I asked my mom if I could take clients because I was getting requests and she allowed me to. So um, I didn't really see the braiding and the art um, as one and the same because kind of in this country, a lot of black arts are undervalued by popular culture and then in turn we've been taught to undervalue them ourselves. So I didn't really um, think that my braiding was something that sh should be celebrated or something that would end up being a major career for me. I always saw it as like a side hustle. Um, but when I thought about my passion and a project that I really wanted to produce, um, I wanted to make a series of portraits of women with kind of like avant-garde, like non unconventional things that, styles that really you wouldn't really wear on a daily basis, but things that I thought were really beautiful and that I wanted to create and then photograph. And I got a tech, I mean, a, a email talking about, do you want to make some hair pieces for Solange? And I was like, yeah, it was like nothing that looked official. It could have been like a, a fake email. I was just like, sure. We had a phone call with uh, myself, Solange, and Chuck Amos, who was a hairstylist that did the hair look for her performance of Don't Touch My Hair. I did the hair for Cranes in the Sky for a Saturday Night Live. And um, I talked to her. She told me that she wanted me to recreate um, the halo that I did for one of my pieces called Finger Wave Saint, but that she wanted it to be embellished with Swarovski crystal beads. And I was like, say no more, fam. Like, you know, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I'm going to make this happen. Because as soon as I put the piece on her just for them to test it, everybody was like, oh, it's, it's perfect. And I was like, OK, you know. So it was really like, um, almost a spiritual moment for me seeing that on stage um, being performed to a song that I really like by an artist that I really like and respect. The, the whole kind of impetus of all the work that I create is really to venerate the image of the black woman um, and, and in traditional kind of African stylings and black stylings kind of to honor um, the African American experience and the African experience and just black existence as beautiful. Okay, I got the mic. Hey, y'all. Um, I remember specifically a big change with my hair was when I transitioned from perm to being natural. Like, my aunt, for some odd reason, she always had to say so in my hair. Like, it was like she told my mom, I was six going on seven at the time when I got my first relaxer. And she told my mom that my hair was unkept. Like, I always kept in, like, struggle ponytails or struggle buns. And I never did anything with my hair, nor did she want to do my hair. So that was kind of like bad on her. So she's like, okay, you're gonna go get this relaxer and you're gonna deal with it. I was fine with it. Like I liked having my hair long and changing it up and doing it for styles. But then eventually, like over two years ago, I was like, I can't take this anymore. I did big chalk twice with a perm. It broke off my ends when I got crochet for the first time. And then I dyed it. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. So I said, snip the, be gone. But so then I did the big chop, I cut my hair. I was like, all right, cool. So I started growing my hair back out, then I dyed my hair. And it was temporary dye, it was blue. It was this bright, bright blue. Mm -hmm. And then blue. Exactly. Oh, it was a cute, cute. It, it was, was a cute blue. Blue. It was I had I had the cookie monster blue. <laughs> yeah, I had the cookie monster blue. I had the cookie monster blue. It was cute. Then my hair started going out, but I didn't get the permanent, so it like died down. It was like then it turned, it went from blue to like like a dark, 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 dark green. 
and then it went to green, and then it was like blonde, which was recently. And so just yesterday, I was like, I've actually enjoyed having short hair. And I don't know if I actually want to go out my hair or if I actually want to keep it short. Because I'm like, if I cut my hair again and I cut it down to the length that I want, it's like, oh, what's the thoughts going to be? And this is going to be a huge change because my hair has been short, but it's never been this short. So just this morning, I was like, I'm ready to do it. And I had my, I looked at my mom. I was like, mom, she's like, what secret? And so I was like, woman that gave birth to me, <clears throat> I want to cut my hair again. And she's like, you do? And she's like, yeah. I was like, how short you want it? I was like, I want it really, really short. So she got the shears. She's like, go find my shears in the comb. I can't. Like, okay. So she, we go in there, we sit in there. She's, so she cut it all off. And honestly, I have never, this is like the biggest thing I've ever done. Because it was so many faces like, I've never seen your hair that short. Oh, it's crazy. That's, that's crazy. And I'm like, oh, it feels kind of crazy. See, Big child, I think that's like one of the scariest things to do because really? it's like yeah. it's like you're in there and it's like <sighs> okay, I'm about to lose my hair, I'm about to be bald. It's like all or nothing. Right? It's like it's like it's either all you can't come back from exactly. this or it's like all right, I got like, I got this. I learned that a space of mostly black women can bring out the best in them and make them blossom. I hope we can protect black hair salons because they are sacred spaces for our community and safe spaces for black and brown women. 